Good evening, everybody. Do I need to hold this up, or is it okay this way? Hold it. Good evening, and welcome to the UNA USA Dane County Monthly Lecture Program. This is going to be different than our normal lecture program, um, but it's nonetheless a, a monthly occasion for our chapter. Uh, I'm Todd Cummer, immediate past president of our chapter. Uh, Barbara Nichols is the president and unfortunately was uh, or is in Florida on a speaking engagement tonight and could not be here. Uh, we sponsor these programs, as I said, the second Tuesday of each month, September through June. And we bring speakers to the community that uh, we believe brings some important messages about world issues, important subjects, and quite often concerning programs in the United Nations. Tonight is a special program, and I'll explain a little bit about our program later on. Uh, but before I introduce uh, a couple of announcements. First of all, what would we do without a lost and found? <laughs> so, it's ours. All right. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> Somebody found this on the floor tonight. It's a calendar book. There's no name on it. So anyway, it'll be on the over here. <laughs> uh, there were there were no scribbles. <laughs> I know what Joe's looks like, and <laughs> no, it's definitely not his. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I would like to thank the UW South Asian Studies Program for providing the delicious Joseph Elderberry ice cream tonight. They provided it <coughs> free of charge. <coughs> and they provided it in honor of Joe for his work and contribution to the study of South Asia for 50, 53 years at UW Madison. Certainly an accomplishment. Deserves ice cream at a minimum, but lots more than that. Um, another announcement, there's an upcoming conference uh, sponsored by Sabil North America, Voices for Peace and Justice in the Holy Land, November 7th and 8th at the Pyle Center. And the conference is intended to examine the role of the United States in Palestine and Israel and give us an opportunity to listen to some of the voices about that part of the world that are not often heard in the quest for peace and justice for all the peoples in the Holy Land. Sabil North America is a nonprofit Christian ecumenical organization seeking justice and peace in the Holy Land through nonviolence and education. And going on at the same time as the conference, actually before the conference and during the conference, there will be an exhibit, Boycott the Art of Economic Activism. And this is a collection of historical boycott posters providing a visual history of economic activism over the last 60 years. And from November 1st through the 6th, it will be at the crossings, 127 University Avenue, and at the, on the 7th and 8th, it will be at the Seville Conference. And there's uh, information about the conference and the exhibit on the table uh, next to the door. Um, Bonnie Block has an announcement. I'd like to invite all of you to a concert, a benefit concert, tomorrow evening at St. John's Lutheran Church, 322 East Washington Street at 7. What it is is Mona Augustine he is an um, advocate, a musician, he's from Haiti, and he has been, since the 2010 earthquake, he has been working with a tent community of 126 families. They've been displaced twice, and he is on tour in the U.S trying to raise funds so they can buy a permanent piece of land. Anyway, I've heard him sing. It's quite wonderful. He composes and writes his own music. And uh, it's at 7 o'clock tomorrow night uh, at St. John's Lutheran Church, just off the square. And Mona Augustine in concert. If, I've got a, just one flyer left. If anybody's interested, come see me after. Thanks, Bonnie. I uh, just wanted to make a quick announcement about the next two UNA meetings. Uh, in November and December. There are little pieces of paper on your on the seats, but on November 11th, we're lucky to have one of the speakers speak with us who's here for the Sabil Conference, 
from Palestine. His name is Wiam, and he's the founder and director of the Palestinian Conflict Resolution Center in the West Bank. And the title of his talk will be Conflict Transformation, Working for Peace in the West Bank. And just want to add, uh, 2014, the, the UN has various years, year of this year and year of that. And one of the years of this year for the UN is the year of, of uh, uh, forgetting the word, anyway, with the Palestinian, pe solidarity with the Palestinian peoples. So I think we're very fortunate to have Wiam here to speak with us on November 11th at 7 o'clock in this room. On December 9th, also 7 o'clock in this room, Chris Watley, who's Executive Director of the UNA USA in Washington, D.C., is coming to speak to us. Uh, the title of his speech is not determined yet, but I think you might guess what it will be about, and that he's coming from the National Office and uh, speaking, no doubt will speak about issues in the nation's capital and, and New York. So the USA UNA Dane County has been active in Madison since the late 1940s, presenting information about the state of our world and the critical issues before the United Nations, providing opportunities for members to influence our national legislature, and on occasion joining with the wider Madison community to support concerns for peace and justice for all our citizens. We're a member of the National UNA USA organization. As I just mentioned, Chris Watley is the executive director. And in uh, looking at the website, I discovered something quite interesting about the, this organization. Uh, when former First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt completed her term as US representative to the UN General Assembly in 1951, she walked into the office of our predecessor organization, the American Association for the United Nations, office and ask for something to do. What a gift to have the first lady walk in and say, can I help you in some way? But this was Eleanor Roosevelt, not just any first lady in my opinion. Her offer was gratefully accepted and in early 1953 she established an office at the association's headquarters. This was the quiet beginning of a major campaign in which Mrs. Roosevelt carried the message of the American Association for the United Nations across the country through personal appearances, recruitment speeches, and fundraising efforts that continued until her death in November 1962. She was elected chairwoman of the board in 1961. The Dane County chapter has been active in supporting local model UN groups in the high schools and, in, and at the UW. Most recently, we supported Monona Grove Models UN Club to appear at a conference in Chicago, and a few weeks ago facilitated a speaker from Nicaragua here for the Latin American, Caribbean, and Iberian Studies program to speak to the club members. And I know there's at least one student from Monona Grove here, Anna. Where is Anna? If she could stay. There she is back there. Very active member. She's in fact the president of the club in Monona Grove. And I know there are some UW students here. Would they just stand so we could acknowledge your, you? Great. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. I'm glad you're here tonight. And I'd like to also introduce, I'm not going to introduce each one, but would the Dane County, uh, UNA Dane County board members please stand? We all have name tags on, but if you just stand and if you have any questions about our organization afterwards, please don't hesitate to approach and ask any of us. <laughs> now the hard sell, the reason you're here. We would welcome and encourage you to become a member of our organization. And we placed a pamphlet like this on each seat that tells about UNA USA, and on the back fold, is an application form to become a member. And I truly hope you'll consider becoming a member of UNA USA tonight. My personal goal is to have 10 new members to UNA USA Dane County tonight. So I'm counting on 10 of you to sign up. And to facilitate that, Helen Finley, over here, who's our board member, after the meeting, she'll be back by the table just inside the door. You can Talk to Helen about becoming a member and give her a check or cash or whatever, however you want to do it. 
So 10 people we hope, I hope for. Now to tonight's program. We're here to celebrate two events. First, October 24th, this Friday, marks the 69th anniversary of the creation of the United Nations. These are challenging times, and the UN, though not perfect, is operating around the globe in many areas. Peacekeeping operations, preserving the health, of, health and lives of citizens from many deadly health outbreaks, including Ebola, and promoting the rights of women and girls, to name a few. Specific, some of the specific activities of the UN, some I call bricks and mortar, we can easily count them. Others are not so easily counted. Providing food to 90 million people in 80 countries each year. Vaccinates 58% of the world's children, saving 3 million lives each year. UN assists over 38.7 million refugees and people fleeing war, famine, or persecution. Keeps the peace with 120,000 peacekeepers in 16 operations in four continents. That alone is just mind-boggling to me. Protects and promotes human rights on site and through some 80 treaties and declarations. Promotes maternal health, saving the lives of 30 million women a year and uses diplomacy to prevent conflict, assisting some 60 countries a year with their elections. I could go on and on, but I just wanted to give a flavor of some of the great things the UN does and things that we try to support as part of as an organization. Now, our second celebration for tonight is to present our Global Citizen of the Year Award. UNA USA Dane County recognizes there, there are many people in our community whose work exemplifies the best of the United Nations. Each year since 2008, we have named the Global Citizen of the Year. The award recognizes someone in our community who in the spirit of the United Nations has worked to improve the health, equality, environment, education, living conditions, rule of law for others, or sought conflict resolution to resolve conflicts peacefully. The person may have worked to enhance the knowledge and understanding of the work of the United Nations. Previous winners have been, in 2008, Mike Bain for his work in Vietnam, 2009, Jennifer Lowenstein for her work in Palestine, 2010, Norma Berkowitz for assisting the people affected by the Chernobyl nuclear power plant disaster, 2011, Lisa Fernandez for founding the Nicaragua Wheelchair Project, Lisa is here, we welcome her. 2012, excuse me, 2012, Sarif U and Roger Garms for the Cambodian School Project. And in 2013, Professor Vince Kavalowski at Edgewood College for teaching the philosophies and peace of social justice. Tonight, we are pleased to present the 2014 Global Citizen of the Year Award to Joe Elder. And John Nichols will make that introduction. John Nichols holds a bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin Parkside and a master's degree from Columbia University Graduate School of Journalism. He's the Washington correspondent for The Nation and the editor for the Capital Times. He pioneered the political blog in 1999, which he's continued to do since then. As you probably know, he's a regular contributor to In These Times and the Progressive Magazine. He is co-founder of Free Press with Bob McChesney, and Josh Silver has written several books, the most recent being, I'll see if I can pronounce this, Dollarocracy, <laughs> How the Money and Media Election Complex is Destroying America. With that, John, please do the introduction. That's very sweet. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate Todd reading the introduction exactly as I gave it to him. Uh, <laughs> Actually, no, it's kind of embarrassing. When you're introducing somebody, uh, I'm not sure you should be introduced. But I am absolutely delighted to see the size of the crowd tonight. This is fabulous. And, and in fact, I'm going to start by doing what I do a lot these days, which is taking a picture of you. <laughs> and uh, the reason I do this is because they're, here, I'll take it. Uh, then everybody, I'm going to step over here and get the full. Power of the media. Yes. Uh, in fact, there we go. Let's uh, let's all smile and wave. It's okay. Look at you. Fantastic. It looks massive. 
Because you know what? There are an awful lot of people in America who wouldn't believe for a second that you could fill a room on a Tuesday night, I hope it's Tuesday, in a busy week, with people who are enthusiastic about the United Nations and everything that it stands for. And we need to be a lot more aggressive in saying that the United Nations, for all of its faults and all the things we may criticize, is the absolutely central force that we have for advocating for peace and economic justice on an international stage. So I am very delighted to see all of you folks tonight. And I'm seeing also that you're not very good at applauding. Uh, and, and that's a disappointing reality, which I think is, is, is somewhat an infection of the Midwest. But you should give yourself a very loud round of applause for showing your vote. Now, would everyone who's a Quaker in the room please raise your hand? Fabulous. This is very, very good. We have near dominance. <laughs> the Quakers are a very small religion, a tiny, quasi irrelevant religion as regards membership. There are literally irrelevant sects of other religions that are bigger than the Quakers as a whole. And, and it is also a remarkably misunderstood religion. So any time where we can have a substantial number of people in a room and who are part of it, I mean, it's, it's just a given that we're going to try and take over. Uh, because, you know, Quakers are on the march. And, and Joe Elder has made, I, I am a Quaker, and my daughter is a, is a sort of Quaker. Um, and in fact, she was, we, we had a terrible situation when she was born. We had no idea what to do. Right? Because there's not enough, there weren't enough great traditions, you know, and, and all of her friends were being baptized or being, you know, welcomed into uh, shuls or being welcomed into mosques. And, and here's Whitman, you know, hanging around. And, and we thought, well, what shall we do? And, you know, how can we make sure that she's set on the road into life in some sort of moral and decent and, and to our view, uh, vaguely spiritual, although not too braggy about it or anything. Um, and we invited the, the elders over and all of these friends and relatives. And I guess to the extent that Whitman has godparents, it's Joe and Joe Elder. And so we are, uh, this is very, for us it's a very special, special night to, to honor Joe. Um, and I, I'll just say a couple things because you didn't really come to hear me, you came to hear Joe. And he will say such more important things. But when I think of Joe, I think of my favorite of the American founders. And there's so much criticism of the founding of the United States, much of it appropriate. And when you, when you go through it, all the reasons that we, we should be upset with and disappointed in elements of our founding. And then the one decent thing we can always say is, yeah, but Tom Paine. And because Tom Paine actually was the one guy who said, slavery's wrong. And who said, you should respect women. And you ought to have universal suffrage. He said all this at the start. And Tom Paine was, of course, a hanger-on around the Quakers. And Tom Paine's great line, his great line toward the end of his life was, the world is my country, all mankind are my brethren, and to do good is my religion. Not a bad, not a bad place to start. And I always think of Joe Elder in that regard, because... I can never figure out what Joe is or where he is from. <laughs> the guy was, uh, there's some evidence to suggest he may be a Kurd. <laughs> yes, indeed, because he was born, he was born in the Kurdish region of Iran before World War II. Before, you know, at, at the time when Winston Churchill was carefully messing up the maps yeah. so you could have eternal long-term war in the region. Uh, Joe Elder was there, and, and so he's, he may in fact be a Kurd, or an Iranian, or because of his experience and his work, it is possible that he is an Indian. <laughs> 